stood up here in this exact same room and kicked this campaign off. And coming in as a political outsider and attempting to bring common sense back to this process. And I think most of us agree that is uh, lacking in Washington, D.C. You know, but I was committing, committed, and I committed to all of you to try to rein in this out of control spending and to implement kind of a, what we would consider a pro-growth economic plan, which I don't think the Senate is really helping us out. You know, and it's, <laughs> we're talking about bringing that type of stuff back in. And that's, that, that stuff is what we hold up there as the American dream. And I think with the way this country is headed, I don't think any of us think the American dream that we once saw is going to be there for our children and grandchildren. And that's what we're here to continue to fight. Here, here. Now, when you look at that dream, people, people want to you know, say, well, you were a professional athlete, all-American college football player. No, I lived the American dream. You know, I came from Flint, Michigan. Came from a blue-collar family. Father was an auto worker. Worked my tail off to get to where I'm at. You know, I was the first person in my, in my uh, family to go to college. Worked my tail off at that. Made a successful career playing professional football. And ultimately, someone coming from that walk of life to be elected to the United States House of Representatives, that is the American dream, and that's what we're fighting for right now. And why we're, why we're here tonight, and this is my official intention of running for re-election, re as your United States Representative. And I can tell you, and I told you the last time around, that I'm committed to change the way things are done in Washington. And we try and we try, like we said it a minute ago, we're going to need some help on the other end of the Capitol. And I'm going to do everything I can to do that. But I can tell you, I will never let Washington change me. Yeah. I know a lot of us, and we hear it every night on News Year, and I, and I am too, we're frustrated with the hyperpartisanship, the gridlock, the craziness that comes out of Washington every year. You know, and, and reforming a system that, quite frankly, has been backwards for so long isn't going to happen overnight. Didn't get there overnight. We're not going to fix it overnight. And I always use the analogy we got to chip away at. It. We have the big rock wall in front of us, and you got a little tiny hammer. But if you find the right crack in it and you hit it just right, one day it'll all fall apart and you'll walk right through it. But restoring fiscal responsibility, I think, is the key to really turning this around. And the first part is everybody admitting there's a problem. And I don't think this administration and this Senate has even come close to even admitting there's a problem. We've all seen what the president's budget proposes. And we all know that the United States Senate has not passed a budget in over 1,000 days. That, quite frankly, is a disgrace. And to change that kind of stuff, it's going to be hard. And to get the President Obama and his policies, to get those corrected and get him out of the way, this isn't going to turn around until he is former president. Yeah. Now, I know when we hear the President speak, and I I think most people agree, he's not a bad guy. His policies are just wrong. They're not right for this country. They're not what the American people want. And that's what we're there to do, is to have your voices in Washington to help change this country and put us back, to put us back on a sane fiscal path. Because quite frankly, the president has no record to run on. He's running on envy and division right now. 
The leader of the free world is running on envy and division. It's not about that. He wants to call us the do-nothing Congress. I think all of you, when you look at our record and what we've done in the House, we have over 30 bipartisan jobs bills that are sitting on Harry Reid's desk as we speak. It's time to get this country moving forward, Harry Reid. And it is about changing the culture. And ultimately, you do have to work with the other side of the aisle to get things done. And I can tell you, I've spoke to many of you here tonight. I've worked on several issues bipartisan-wise. We passed one of the, the bills that come through every single year. And I'm about to roll, the, roll it out again for next year and try to make a permanent fix, which is our cost of living adjustment for our disabled American veterans. And it's something... It was something that unfortunately is a, is a yearly fix and, and it took a bipartisan effort to get it done. Along with that, I've worked with uh, Congressman Rush Holt, just north of here, getting, a, uh, getting some more funding, getting some funding moved, moved to let our veterans that are coming back with PTSD know that there's programs out there to help them. The suicide rate of our returning men and women, our heroes, is tremendous, and they need our help. We have the ability to do it, but it takes us as a Congress working together to make sure they're taken care of because they have sacrificed enough. Yeah. Yeah. And the one thing everybody, I think, in this district realizes, that Joint Base McGuire Dix Lakers is the largest employer in South Jersey. It is a true jewel of our economic engine here. And you can see what the president rolled out in his budget. He's calling for two more rounds of BRAC. He wants to make this stuff go away. And I can tell you, we're going to do everything we can to make sure that does not happen. <laughs> And it's not only making sure it does not happen, but bringing more missions to that base, making that base stronger, and making that base the greatest military base in the United States Department of Defense. Yeah. I just want to wrap it up on a personal note. You know, I can tell, I can stand up here and talk all night, but you're not going to get anything out of it. But I'm going to leave this one thing with you. Now, I'm going to challenge everybody in this room to give me everything you got because I'm going to give you more than you can give me. So I promise you all that. It's not going to be easy, but if it were easy, it's not worth having, and we can only do it together. So I appreciate all you guys' help. Rally the troops because it's going to be a it's going to be a ride. We're going to enjoy it, but most of all, we're going to get our country back. So we have a great country to hand off to our children. Yeah. And our children. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.